A mid-engine 4.0 naturally aspirated Porsche, and it's a manual transmission. Is this car the dream car of keyboard racers? Hello everyone, welcome to the Keyboard Racer Cult, and I am the Guru. Uh, as everyone knows, the Porsche 718 is not a particularly rare sight in everyday life or on the racetrack. However, today, two people waited over three hours for a 718 and not even a clean one. So what kind of magic does it have that it makes both a Guru who has driven various idle ones and a used car dealer who almost owns every Porsche eagerly anticipate? Yes, it is the parallel imported manual GT4, even more expensive than the 718 GT4 RS. Uh, due to the high taxes and fees of parallel imports, this car's on the road price is 2.5 million Chinese yuan. In China, this price could even buy a 520 horsepower 991.2 GT3 RS. Okay, let's briefly introduce the 718 GT4. It has a 4.0 naturally aspirated engine, 414 horsepower, 419 nm meters of torque and a maximum speed of 8,000 RPM. The front suspension uses the same as the 911 GT3, and the seats are the same carbon fiber racing seats as the GT3 RS. The car weighs 455 kilograms. The tires used are Dunlop's Race 2, roughly equivalent to Michelin's Cup 2C. According to Porsche's official website, the manual GT4's official 096 kmh acceleration time is 4.2 seconds, while the PDK version is 3.7 seconds. The data looks great, especially for a mid-engine manual sports car. Um, but as everyone knows, Porsche's favorite thing to do is to nerf the 718, even the GT4. The first cut is that it doesn't use the GT3's 4.0 engine, not that high revving race engine that can go up to 9,000 RPM. Instead, it uses the 3-liter turbo engine from the Carrera, then removes the turbo, overbores it to 4 liters, which is quite a painstaking effort. The second cut is the coverings. For a car with 2.5 million, you actually use an iron top. By comparison, the BMW M4 e has a carbon top. If you can't afford carbon, at least use aluminum. The third strip cut is the gear ratio. As for how much this affects performance, let's take it to the track. Go! The final lap time of the 718 GT4 is 56 seconds 81, ranking in the top 10% of the factory leaderboard. Slightly faster than a non-full condition GTR, but far behind the Porsche 992S. For a GT4, this is not a particularly good result. In the overall leaderboard, the GT4 ranks 22nd out of 201, which is in the top 11%, only slightly faster than an Elantra N fitted with Cup 2C tires. It seems the Korean PDK's reputation is well deserved, making the GT4 a bit awkward. Welcome to Keyboard Insights. This lap time is not particularly fast at 56 seconds and 81. Why is it not so fast? There are three main reasons. The first is the tires. Although they are race tuned, which sounds similar to Cup 2C and nearly matches its grip, these tires are quite old. They've been used in two track sessions, so their rear tires are particularly poor making the car's tail drift in high-speed corners. The second reason is the natural aspirated engine's torque isn't great. It's only 419 nm. The racing circuit really requires low-speed explosive power and torque, um, so it's not very suitable for this track. The third reason is its gear ratio, which further amplifies the weakness of its naturally aspirated engine. 
Uh, this strange engine derived from Carrera's 3-liter turbo engine with the turbos removed and overboard to 4 liters exacerbates its low torque deficiency. How fast can this car go in second gear at 8,000 RPM? 132 km per hour. This is the longest second gear I've ever seen. So in racing circuit, you only use third gear for a second or two before you have to shift down the second. If a naturally aspirated engine car wants to be fast at race, it needs a very close gear ratio. Also, with a manual transmission, you can't do left foot braking, and each shift actually wastes some time, another point where manual doesn't match up to PDK. I, of course, are mainly talking about gear ratios here. The PDK model GT4's top speed in second gear is 120 km per hour, which is a much more reasonable ratio than the 132, but still on the long side. Yeah, this has been a legacy issue for Porsche, dating back to the 981 and 991, where the second gear ratio was particularly long, impacting performance. Next, let's look at the GT4 RS. At 8,000 RPM in second gear, its speed is only 105 km per hour. Although it's still long, it's clearly two grades better than the manual GT4. Plus, the GT4 RS can go up to 9,000 RPM as it uses the GT3 engine. Do you know how close the gear ratios are in the 992S? If I remember correctly, its second gear can only go up to 80-something. I haven't verified this, but it's very, very close. Plus, with the turbo engine's explosive power in the 992S, it's both close and powerful, which is very satisfying. This car feels a bit more like it's meant for everyday driving rather than track driving, so I give it a subjective value rating of S-. I remember giving my previous M4 an S-. minus. I gave the GT3 RS an S+, plus and uh, the 992S also an S-, minus because the steering feel of the 992S and its chassis feel a bit more like a sedan, which I don't like as much. I remember giving the 991.2 GTS an S, not a particularly high score. The reason is that I thought it was a track machine, but it actually feels a bit more like a family car, whether it's the engine's power characteristics or the chassis stiffness. And it wasn't quite what I expected. I was very excited before driving this car. Couldn't sleep the night before, you know? Um, I didn't lose sleep the night before driving the Ferrari SF90, but when driving this car, I thought, mm, tomorrow I'm going to drive a super competitive car, a manual GT4. But after the first quarter, I realized it felt a bit like a grocery gear. What does that feel like? Kind of like the Civic Si? What does the GT3 feel like? like the FD2? This car feels like the Civic Si. It's like the GT3's low revs are particularly powerful, especially the 0.1 GT3. But it's insanely powerful at high revs, especially at 7, 8, 9,000 RPM. But this car in low revs feels okay, but not insane at high revs. Oh, I forgot to mention because of emission testing, its horsepower might be 20 to 30 less than normal. This is what the owner told me. So in a few days, let's see if we can change to a new set of tires, like Cup 2R, and fix the emission debuff. It might run a more impressive lap time on a larger track. Another rather grocery-like aspect is its somewhat soft chassis. Although not as soft as the 992S, it's not actually soft, as it has little body roll due to its excellent chassis structure. But it doesn't feel like you're driving a tight race car. It lacks that race car feel. So it's called GT4, not as tense as the GT3. Next, I'll talk about the subjective driving aspect of its advantages. Um, the advantage is that it feels like an MR, a mid-engine 911. It's different from a regular 718 whose limit is narrow, once you exceed this limit, the rear quickly swings out, requiring quick counter-steering to recover. However, this car has a very broad chassis limit. It's not like a race car's high and narrow limit, but immensely wide. You can slide it however you want, which makes it very beginner-friendly, and you can drive it fast. I think it combines the perfect physical structure of a mid-engine 718 with the advanced chassis of a 911, merging the best of both worlds. This is why I think it's like a mid-engine 911. Moreover, you don't have to worry about the tail as in a 911, which is cumbersome and not particularly good to drive. So, I personally don't really like rear-engine, rear-wheel drive cars. This car suits those who want the high-end chassis of a 911, but don't like its big rear end. This aspect is what I think is its biggest advantage. The second point is that its shifting feel is quite good. Of course, a good shifting feel doesn't necessarily make it faster right? Because an automatic PDK is always faster than a manual. Now, speaking of its drawbacks, the gear ratio is too long. I've already mentioned its performance drawbacks due to the long gear ratio. Um, in terms of daily driving experience, I prefer uh, shorter gears that rev up quickly, constantly needing to shift, like roar to the top and then shift. 
It's like driving a small, low-power car, such as a Honda Fit or Suzuki Swift. Although their horsepower might be low, each acceleration is very quick due to the tight gear ratio. Some modified cars are even more pronounced in this aspect. Those big tail junk cars like a Peugeot 206 need constant shifting, which is very passionate. Driving this car feels too relaxed, you know? Its second gear can go up to 132 km per hour, meaning in regular urban driving, second gear is all you need. You'd be speeding just in second gear, it's too relaxed. Even when driving in the mountains, I feel this car's sparse gear ratio doesn't offer much fun. If you're constantly shifting to third or fourth gear, the revs drop too low. In contrast, I like those 100 to 200 horsepower small front-wheel drive cars with very close gears where you keep shifting. I think that kind of mountain driving feels more in tune with the car. This car is more suited for wealthy and relaxed drivers, not so much for me. That's about it for this car. Um, in summary, it's more relaxed and comfortable than I expected. Definitely not a racer-like track machine. Okay, that's it for this episode. Don't forget to like to support the channel. And if you like track content, please subscribe. See you next time.